So in SQL, not that you need to know SQL in and out to really understand link, but in SQL, when I say select splat, that says give me all columns. So give me all columns from this customer's table. I can uh, do a more narrow or narrower projection. Notice all the columns is kind of noisy. I can say, hey, give me the contact name and give me the company name. And yeah, we'll just go roll with those two. Give me the contact name and company name for each customer. So when I run this query, that slices or I guess dices on whatever the vertical cut is. Um, it, it pulls the columns that I list up here. Okay, and so that's called a projection. I guess if you can think of taking a light uh, projector, pointing it straight down, we're projecting through the data just certain columns and things. We well, can do something similar using anonymous types. In link, so I'm going to say var result gets from C in a DB dot customers um, select, and then I just pop out an anonymous type here new C dot I can't remember what I used over in SQL C dot contact name and company name. Okay, C dot contact name, C dot company name. And if these anonymous types are new to you, like uh, as I always say, go review the video on the anonymous types, but essentially I'm just creating a new instance of a an object here with just two properties for contact name and company name. So uh, when I, in fact this is one of the reasons why we have var in the C sharp language. I can't say I enumerable I enumerable of this anonymous type because this type doesn't have a name. Okay, it's it's just anonymous. It's unknown to me, so I can't, I can't take this name and put it here in the generic. There, the compiler, the the name to this type is only known to the compiler. Thus, I have to leave it to the compiler to fill in the details there. So I just slam var out there. Anyway, but I, when I iterate over the result here for each var, um, I don't know row in result dot or just result, I can cw row dot and then it's just the anonymous type. Uh, again, go watch the video if you don't understand these. But basically, a uh, company name and contact name. I get the two columns I have projected, just like I did in link here. I've projected two of the columns of my type. So anyway, c dot contact name. Let's just print that out for now. And we see here, as it loads, we get all the contact names. And again, just like with any link query, I can mix in where's here and other uh, things order by or that kind of thing but, but basically I just wanted to show you the projection in this video which is what we have here it's kind of interesting to translate this I should leave it as an exercise for you but I'll go ahead and translate this just so you can see it and we got a little bit of time left in this video I'm gonna call this result 2 and remember the compiler just doesn't translate this line to anything it just reads the variable name and the source name so db.customers so let's uh, put the source out here, db.customers, and then dot uppercase uh, parenthesis, and then C, because that's our variable name we defined here, and C is of type customer, because db.customers is an I enumerable of customer. Okay, so select new, all that stuff. Okay, anyway, you can see this, this gets real simple real quick, but... Let's uh let's go on and I'll take this to a uh, static method call syntax. The next step the compiler has to take is to convert this to static method calls. So I'm gonna say db.customers and select is a member of enumerable. And then there's the source, the first argument. Look there. The source is this customers here. And then the second thing is the func takes customer, returns a uh tilde A, which I guess is the compiler's way of saying uh, it's an anonymous type, has a contact name, company name, and both of these are strings. So that's kind of nice that the IntelliSense writers made that nice and intuitive. Anyway, so there you go. There's static method call syntax. And then, well, <laughs> I'll just keep rolling with this. This is a lambda. That's still sugar, so we need to desugarize that. So the next step here is, is let's desugarize that lambda expression. So result 4. And then the lambda expression when it's an I enumerable. Later I'll show you what really works with the Unity framework and the link to entities. It uses uh, expression trees, which is a little bit different. But most of the, 
But right now it's still, the compiler's still converting these to methods just the way I have this set up with IEnumerable. So it looks like it's got to return, a, oh, it's got to return a new anonymous type. So we actually have to desugarize the anonymous type as well. So let's do that. Class, it doesn't matter what we call it. It's anonymous, right? Um, and then we need a, let's see, public string contact name and get private set. And control L, control V V just to cut cut and paste that line real quick. Let's do company name. So we're making our immutable anonymous type. Then we need the constructor, C T O R, tab tab, and we're gonna take string contact name, string company name. And all I'm doing here is the compiler's work, what it does in the background. So we we really don't see this, but it's good to know what the compiler's doing and good to kind of illustrate it here. So contact name gets the argument passed in and company name the property gets the gets the uh, argument passed in so company name okay so now I can desugarize this lambda expression down to a method I'm gonna actually do it right up here um, static it's gonna return a sag void whatever um, and then the name of the method doesn't really matter it's anonymous right Let's make it nice and short. We'll call it fi. Uh, and then it needs to take a customer, right? The c is a customer argument. So customer c. And then literally the compiler just, you know, uh, cut or copy, I guess. Copy, paste. Put a return out here. But then this is no longer our anonymous type. It needs to be this choice thing. So let's do that. Oops. I'm going to copy the name of this type there. Paste it there. Open it up for the for the uh, constructor. Oh boy, a lot of work. And then now instead of this lambda here, we're actually going to send in fi. You're probably laughing at me the whole time I'm doing this because I've forgotten semicolons all the way down here. So here's some semicolons, semicolons. Okay, so that's about as desugarized as we can get. I think, and, and just to show you that it works, I'm going to for each here, for each um, var row in result for, and I could say for each one of these, sad voids, fist, whatever, um, cw row dot, hey look, company name, contact name, just like we had before, so let's do, let's do contact name, I like to talk to people instead of companies, so. There we go. And voila. <laughs> All the data. Okay. Anyway, so that's project that's a that's a long video for just showing you how to do a projection. But that's how you do a projection in link.